Well, the kayak is inflated, I'm in the sea, and it is the cloudiest it's been all bloody week. Um, look at this. I'm staying fairly close to the shore because I don't want to, if I lose sight of the shore, well, I'll probably panic <laughs> if I lose sight of the shore, it just makes it a little bit harder to navigate. So I'm just going to keep following the shore, keep about, I don't know what I am, 50 metres out, nice and steady. Um, not seen any seals today or any whales or anything else, but then I'm not likely to see much, I'm to be honest with you. Still, it's all good exercise. It was hard, it's hard enough work pumping to pull anything up. Didn't want to come out in after I've done that. I've brought so much gear to, <laughs> to set up. Bear in mind, I'm only sleeping in the in the kayak. I've brought so much gear with the bivy, the sleeping bag, blah, blah, blah. I've got like two big waterproof bags full of stuff. I've got that one. And I've got this one behind me. So, uh, yeah, watch this space. If I see any wildlife, I shall let you know. So, I'm just going across the mouth of Findhorn Bay. So, I've had to come a little bit further out. <laughs> But I'm all right, I know where I'm going. I've got my sat-nav and everything. I've got my compass, blah, blah, blah. So I know where the shore is. The shore is kind of there, but it looks pretty spooky, doesn't it? Because of the fog. But look how still it is. It's not usually this still when I've done kayaking on Ullswater. Um, that always takes some doing, whereas this is super still, so I'm flying through. I've got a lot faster than, I, well, a lot further than I thought I would. So I'm just going, the coastline top ends there. It's a gap there for the bay entry and it's over there I'm heading, but I've made really good time so I might go a little bit further on. So, uh, it's pretty spooky though, isn't it? Just me. <laughs> no other mad bugger. I did see some paddleboarders out earlier, but no wildlife, no minkies, no orcas, no dolphins. This, way, this weather's putting them off. But the sun's burning it off, I think, so with a bit of luck in about an hour or so, we might be better. So, let's head for sure. Just seen a seal and I'm gonna try and catch it. Not catch it literally, catch up with it. That's the second seal that's just breached in front of me. And by the time I get the camera, they've buggered off. I'm so gutted. Well I'm not, because I've seen it. I'm just gutted that I couldn't show it with you guys. Just, oh. Every time I head in the direction they obviously see me come in and bugger off. This is so cool. I'm... Oh. Come on. Should have brought some fish out of me, shouldn't I? <laughs> Just know as soon as I turn the camera off, <laughs> they're going to come back out there. Right, watch it. If I leave it running, I'll run out of battery before you know it. And, and they won't show themselves. And as soon as I uh, put my camera down and turn it off, I guarantee they'll pop up again. All right, I'm gonna leave it, leave it running for a bit. I guarantee you they'll <laughs> not be there. So keep your eyes peeled. Right, I'm using this on zoom mode now. I'm not, I'm not sure how clear it is. Here's one. There's one over there. Oh, there he is. <laughs> with a bit of luck, with a bit of editing, I can crop this so I can zoom in a bit more. Is he coming over to sail? That's very close. 
Well, this is awesome. I only denied about not coming out in the kayak today because of the, uh, look at him, because of the, the fog. And I thought, hmm, I thought, well, if I stay close to the coast, it'll be fine. And, and it's lifting a bit anyway, and I've been absolutely fine. And I'm so glad I did. It's one of those, you know, shall I, shall I? And I know that now if I hadn't done it, I'd have been kicking myself. If someone had said, oh, there were loads of seals out that day. I mean, the only thing that could top this is if I saw some dolphins, some whales, or the rare thing that you do get around here, but not very often, is an orca. Um, very unlikely to see those, especially in such shallow waters. But uh, you never know. That I would kill to see an orca in, you know, in real life, not, not in bloody sea world or something stupid like that. This is where you should be seeing, unless it's a sanctuary where animals are going, you know, for reason, for valid reasons, there's another boy, uh, then they should be in the wild. This is the only way you should be seeing, you know, water creatures, you know. I mean, I'm not talking about aquariums, because usually aquariums aren't too bad when, they, you know, they have a reasonable amount of space, they're not too bad at all, but, you know, I'm, I'm talking when you have sea life centre where you have a bloody orca trapped in a you know, that's used to the ocean, or probably not used to the ocean because it's been bred in captivity, but they're designed to live in the ocean, aren't they? You know, I'm not getting all Greenpeace on you, but you know what I mean? It just, you know, when you see stuff like this where it's supposed to be, it's pretty special, you know. Oh, here we go. Surrounded. <laughs> the thing is, this on this camera, you know, I've zoomed in a little bit, but they just look, they look like the miles away, and they're really not. <laughs> it's just amazing. Just keep coming to say hello. And I think I saw either a dolphin or a whale, but it was too far away. But the way it was moving through the water, it was definitely not a seal. Uh -huh. <laughs> this has just made my holiday. Did you see him? There's one, two, three, four, five over there. One breached near me about ten minutes ago. It scared the life out of me because it was like it made a massive splash. It was about six foot away from me. To be honest with you, this alone, just this kayaking trip today. It was, worth, it was worth driving to Scotland for alone. Someone just said, do you want to drive to Scotland for six and a half hours and sit in a kayak and be surrounded by what, uh, see, seals? I'd be like, go on then. <laughs> uh, I've all got a bit camera shy. As soon as I put my camera away, that's when I come closer. <laughs> It's literally like they're not, they're not, they don't want to be caught on film too close. This one, a bit closer. That is probably 20 foot away from me. Oh, that, there you go. <laughs> that was about six foot away from me. As long as one doesn't do that too close to the, the boat and tip me up. Leave it there, see if we can get some more light. Okay, so I'm all ashore now. It's just about because the fog is just coming in really bad now. Um, pulled my boat up here, my kayak. So hopefully, the sea won't quite come up here and drift away <laughs> during the night. Um, nice forest there. I'm going to put up, uh, I'm going to use my bivvy and my sleeping bag, and I'm going to put um, my tarp up somehow. I don't know how yet over the top just in case it decides to rain through the night and it also keeps a bit of the wind off but how I'm going to peg it in the sand I don't know so this could be a very makeshift <laughs> job uh, we shall see um, and if it is windy it'll probably blow it away 
but uh, improvise, adapt, overcome, my motto. Let's see how it goes. So I'll bring you back when it's all set up. Well, I've had an absolutely epic day. Um, kayaking with the dolphins. Uh, sorry, with the dolphins, I wish. Kayaking with the seals was just amazing. Um, and I've had a fantastic sunset. You can see the mountains in the background. I don't do it justice again. It's beautiful over there. But I don't know if you can hear these birds out there. I'm making a right racket. I don't know what for. Uh, maybe some bird experts out there can tell me. But uh, I'm hoping uh, when the sun goes down completely, they'll shut up. But talking of the sun going down, uh, I spent so long getting all my kit together uh, at the car, and I've brought far too much, like you do. Um, that I've only gone and left my bloody charging stuff at the car. So, I mean, my, my GoPro's got plenty of battery, but my phone has got about 40%, which is enough. I don't need it particularly to get back. It's just follow the coast back to where I started. It will help me. It would help me find exactly where the, on the coast I've parked my car, because there's like about a load of beach huts, but having the phone would be a bit easier. But it's not the end of the world. It just means I've no torch. Um, wish I could use one on my phone, but I, once it gets dark, I'll just go to sleep. It's not the end of the world. Uh, if I get up for a pee in the middle of the night, use my phone. Uh, I'm just kicking myself because I spent so long packing and unpacking and getting it all right. Making sure I had the crucial things. Um, and I think I've changed my packing so much with my chargers to make sure I only took what I needed. And I've gone and left it. Well, I think I've left it in the boot of the car. I'm really hoping I haven't left it on the bonnet or the bit off the top of the car when I was getting ready. But people are pretty honest in this area I think and if I do leave it on top of the car hopefully it'll still be there when I get back hurt feeling that but it is what it is can't do it about it um, so I had a fantastic day uh, just so you know I'll show you my camp now before anybody has a fit uh, yes I have got a campfire I never ever have campfires when I go camping um, I looked up on the laws in Scotland about campsites uh, sorry about uh, open fires as long as you leave no trace and don't set them in you know dangerous areas etc now I'm on the beach, I've dug down, uh, and even, this is how prepared I was, I even brought a roll of uh, tin foil, and I've lined, so I've dug down, lined the pit with tin foil, and I've put stones around it, you know, it's, and I've only used, I've not cut anything down, I've only used driftwood that I've collected myself, devil's own job getting it going. So, you know, just in case there's anybody thinking I shouldn't be doing it, you know, it's, it's safe, it's contained, um, and I'd say I read up on the, well, uh, camp it was in Scotland and it did say you can have campfires as long as you leave no trace well I'll fill the hole in I'll take the embers when it go you know when, it, when I put it out when I go to bed I shall wrap it all the embers up and put it in well I'll wait till it cools down in the morning uh, and I shall um, put it in a bin bag and I'll take it back out with me and I'll fill the hole in put the rocks back where I got them from and never know it's there and if I've got battery left tomorrow I'll show you what it looks like when I'm finished I should imagine I'll be up fairly early because well, <laughs> if these birds are going to make any kind of a racket like they're doing tonight, come first light, I should imagine that'd be my alarm call. So half six-ish probably. So uh, yeah, it's been a cracking little camp. It took me forever to, to get me uh, tarp up because obviously I haven't got sand pegs and I only got a normal pegs so I had to improvise and I've used big chunks of wood and I've buried them and if you're interested, I might even edit this out. Um, I pegged it down a bit, but then I've just covered it in sand, quite a lot of sand and rocks. Um, I don't know if you can see that very well because it's a bit dark. So, it's not, there's no wind, hopefully the wind won't get up overnight. Because if it does, that probably fall down. It's a bit hit and miss because because it's sand, so I wasn't able to peg it down as well as I would have liked. But, it is what it is. So, one last look at that beautiful sunshine. I've got, hopefully i got a cracking sunset uh, time lapse. And i got some pictures, so uh, obviously you will see them if i got some. So I shall bid you all good night. I've got 54% on my battery, so if I see some more seals tomorrow, I'll take some more pictures. Other than that, I shall see you later. Good night.
Well, it's just after 6.30 in the morning. Um, I set my alarm, but the birds did wake up anyway. It's not that noisy, but anyway. Uh, not a bad night's sleep, although I had a bit of a hairy moment when, although pulling my, t my kayak, where you can see right up away from the sea, obviously the sea came in. I knew it was coming in, but I worked out that it shouldn't come in too far, but uh, <laughs> it came in surprisingly close actually. It came in to, I think it's about here. You can see it's fucking sea, I've just been out for a while. Uh, and my tent's there. <laughs> so I had about an hour where I was kind of like sleeping with one eye open, just keeping uh, an eye out on the tide. But now it's gone quite a way out, so uh, I have to drag my bloody kayak miles. Well, not miles, but it weighs enough with all the kit in. So from there, all the way down to there, and then possibly out, because obviously there's a bit of an estuary there, I think. If that's called an estuary. I've got like a bank, a grass, a sandy embankment. So I'll have to pull it straight down and then go right round. It's approximately six and a half degrees this morning, so bloody freezing. <laughs> I mean, I was fine in bed because of um, my thick sleeping bag. But I only slept with my trousers on and a t-shirt, and I was fine. Uh, but my face is a bit cold. But now I've actually got out of the sleeping bag, I'm bloody freezing. But with a bit of luck, the sun's coming up. It's just like, it's going to come up behind those trees, so... I won't get any warmth from it for quite a while. So I'm just going to start packing down, and hopefully by the time I uh, get fully packed down, I'll be able to uh, get in the sea in the sun. Um, but just further to my campfire last night, ashes are all in there. It was totally stone dead this morning, stone cold, uh, and that's where it was, so no trace. Uh, I've filled back the hole, I've got rid of all the stones, so job job well done, even if I do so myself. So uh, with that in mind, I shall come back to you shortly. a bit longer than expected because I overshot where I was supposed to stop because the sun was in my eyes and I couldn't see the landing point so I turned around and went back uh, but it's all been good uh, pretty much today I've uh, got the tide had gone out so by the time I got back to where I should have been I had to hike the, the kayak and all my gear like well I would say miles but it felt like miles because the kayak weighed a ton um, up the beach and then up a really steep shingle <laughs> cliff which wasn't there yesterday because obviously it was uh, the seat the tide was in, so it's been uh, uh, an accurate old morning. I just squared, squared all my kit off, which took ages. Let a load of my kit dry, let the kayak dry before I put it down. So uh, it's literally 10 to 2, <laughs> and comes in and I was up at half past 6 and off in the kayak by 20 past 7. I've done nothing today, but it's been ears because the weather's so nice. I can see it's. It's just, uh, just red hot, so I thought, I didn't really have a lot planned for today anyway, so uh, you know, I don't know what I'm going to do tonight, the plan is to go and uh, camp in Colbin Forest, but uh, if I don't, I don't, uh, I'm just going to have a potter into Findhorn little village now, and uh, have a potter and get something to drink really, because I'm absolutely parched, so I'll catch up in a bit. <laughs> 